Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number 103 of our WWE 2022 save and TW 2020. This is SmackDown for February week four, the go home edition before No Way Out. And uh, as always, lots to get to on this episode. Uh, so let's jump right in. As uh, on the pre show, Humberto Carrillo gets the win over Jinder Mahal in 702, the surprise roll up here. 50 rating overall. Um, Jinder was unhappy with me booking him to lose. So. I had to do the surprise roll-up, and I had to also keep gender strong. Um, and, yeah, that's kind of what we had to do. But I want to give Humberto a win here. As you've seen lately, I've used him, Grand Metalik, Lindsay Dorado, a little bit more. And they've had some pretty decent matches. So, um, yeah, we're going to give Humberto a win here, one he deserves. Uh, and so he gets a victory over gender on the pre-show. All right, let's jump in to the main edition here of this SmackDown with a lot to get to, as we said. Usually our go-home editions are not that noteworthy. This one will be uh, a little bit of the opposite, probably. So, uh, all right, let's jump in here. And we start with uh, Jimmy Uso enters the building. And, uh, of course, he's got the main event coming up at No Way Out. He will challenge Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship uh, in quite an interesting dynamic there. Jimmy enters the building and... He received another phone call. You remember last week on SmackDown, he received a call in the presence of the Tribal Chief, and uh, Roman Reigns demanded that he take the call, and Jimmy did. He left, uh, you know, the, the room there, and uh, we never kind of saw what happened. Well, Jimmy enters the building here, receives another phone call, and you can tell Jimmy's frustrated. Um, and, you know, we, we don't know who he's talking to on the other line. All we know is uh, he says... You know why? Why are we still doing this? Like, why do you keep calling? Um, you know, yes, I, I'm frustrated. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what to do. We've talked about this. I don't know what other option I have. Um, and then, you know, apparently someone asked him a question, and then Jimmy just says, "I don't know where he's at." Um, and that's just kind of what we get to with Jimmy saying, "Look, we'll we'll talk later. I've got to go see, you know, Roman." Um, so the the important lines there. I don't know where he's at. And then I've got to go see Roman. So Jimmy talking to someone again, we assume it's the same person he talked to last week. Uh, we just don't know who it is. Um, and again, who is this person that he doesn't know the whereabouts of? Um, don't know. So a lot of questions coming out of this one. Who's Jimmy talking to? Who's he talking about? Uh, but what we do know is he's got to go visit the head of the table, Roman Reigns, his opponent on Sunday at No Way Out for the Universal Championship. 83 for this segment. All right, and then uh, we get this uh, segment here leading into our first match. Pat McAfee with Samoa Joe. And Joe uh, being asked here about the matchup with Otis. Of course, Joe beat Elias last week. We have the theme going that Joe has said. The next time he loses, he will retire uh, from professional wrestling. And so uh, McAfee asked Joe about the matchup with Otis. You know, Joe just kind of saying, you know, look, Pat, I, every match I go into now, there's an added pressure because I know it could be the last one. Uh, and Joe just says he does not take that lightly, um, and he's not going to take Otis lightly. No matter what Elias says last week, um, he will not take Otis lightly here in this match. So kind of hyping up the pressure for Joe. Every match he goes into, it could be his last, uh, and now we'll see if it is here. Pat, poor on the improvising the dialogue, but it is what it is. 66 for this segment, and um, now we continue on to the match. And will it be Joe's last match ever? You probably knew the answer to that, but wow, 74. I'm a little surprised by this rating. Wow, these two actually put on a pretty decent match here. Um, so Samoa Joe defeats Otis in 731. Um, the Coquina Clutch does it, so um, kind of the, the two powerhouses here going at it with each other. Uh, but Joe is able to get the win and continue his career, and so he does get the victory over Otis. Uh, 74 this is way better than I would have expected between these two. So um, Joe with a 73 in in-ring performance, Otis 55. Uh, so yeah, this definitely exceeded expectations. But Joe's career continues and, you know, it's kind of a, a slow burn here uh, as we continue on uh, with this to try to figure out exactly, um, you know, what's going to happen with Joe uh, and where things stand uh, with him. So uh, all right, on to the next one. And we get a video package here, which will be a, a bit of a theme here on this show. As uh, it is uh, looking at Asuka, of course, she heads into the match against Paige at No Way Out. Uh, the winner goes on um, to, you know, possibly meet the champion uh, leading into, um, you know, 
WrestleMania, and that's kind of where we're at with that. So, um, you know, that's kind of the setup. We had Asuka and Paige with the final two in the Women's Rumble. And so Asuka, looking at her mindset here, um, and also kind of looking at her recent interactions she had with Bianca Belair uh, backstage uh, with Paige last week. So um, that's kind of, you know, anytime we get Bianca in the segment, we're going to because, you know, she's got good ratings and those kind of things. So it's really just looking at Asuka's, you know, mindset and how we've kind of started to see Asuka add that aggressive type of approach a lot more really going back to Survivor Series. So really the past three or four months now, we've seen Asuka kind of turn um, you know, things up a notch here. And so it's really just looking at her mindset uh, and all of that leading into this big match with Paige with the winner going on uh, to WrestleMania to challenge for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Will it be Bianca Belair? Will it be Raquel Gonzalez? Uh, we'll find out. So 68 here for this segment. All right, and then we go backstage and uh, Mick Foley talking with Lita, wanting to know if she has found a partner because, as we know, uh, it has been Sonya Deville and Shayna Baszler who have essentially, you know, issued a challenge to Trish and Lita, and then Trish got the ruptured spleen. She's out for a couple months, um, and so we have left <laughs> having to rebook everything uh, and figure out a partner for Lita. No worries, as Lita tells Foley, she has found a partner, um, and so she will go into No Way Out and challenge uh, for the undisputed women's tag team championships. And so uh, then, you know, as she kind of says that, Foley asks, well, who is it? Here comes the villain Baszler and Mandy Rose, part of the crew there. Um, and that is when, um, you know, we kind of just continue the taunting here of the villain Baszler saying that, you know, no one's been able to beat them to this point and that it doesn't matter who Lita's partner is. Um, they're not championship uh, worthy, you know, of taking their titles. So, um, yeah, basically the villain Baszler just running down the fact that, um, you know, Lita's not a champion. doesn't matter who their partner is. They're not a champion either, but they are the champions. Uh, and that's kind of their approach here leading into it. So we will have a undisputed women's tag team championship match at No Way Out. The villain Baszler defending against Lita and a mystery partner. 65 for this one. All right, then in a 69 segment here, nice rating. Um, it is uh, Samoa Joe walking backstage after his match with Otis. And who walks up to him? None other than Gunther. And we have the stare down backstage between Samoa Joe and Gunther here. And uh, yeah, just kind of a very stoic standoff between these two. Uh, and that is kind of how we leave it as uh, Gunther gets ready to head to the ring as he will have a match and it will not go well. <laughs> gets a 44, my goodness. Uh, well, this, you know, this took the crowd down a little bit. Not exactly what we want with a, a Gunther match here, but... I mean, look, I guess if you're looking at it stylistically, I can understand why these two would not have uh, great chemistry. But, you know, we didn't really have anyone else to choose from. <laughs> so I kind of went with Cedric here, and he was really the only one that, you know, we had not had a match with yet. Uh, with Gunther, he's, he's kind of been running through, you know, people over the past several weeks. So, yeah, we went with Cedric, and it didn't work out well, did it? So 44, not great <laughs> to, to grow uh, Gunther's popularity, but it is what it is, another victory. And just another sort of dominant performance here from uh, Gunther here as we move forward. So, all right, that leads us into another video package as uh, it is now looking at Paige's motivation to win the championship. Um, you know, kind of looking at Paige's return, go all the way back to the Mae Young Classic. She finally gets cleared to return to the ring, beats Charlotte Flair, advances on. But that, of course, is when we remember she lost to Tonya Deville thanks to Mandy Rose, um, you know, kind of joining the group there and um, so all of that, all of that leading to Paige's return, and we get kind of those, you know, kind of focused interviews here with Paige, just saying, look, there's a reason she returned to the ring. She waited so long because she knew, you know, once she got back, she had one goal in mind, and that was to be a champion again. Um, and so it's really just looking at her motivation here, also kind of hyping up, you know, kind of some of her recent interactions with Bianca as well. Um, and now she goes into that match at No Way Out. Uh, to take on Asuka, like we said, with the winner going to WrestleMania. So um, that is your setup here with uh, just kind of hyping up these two uh, leading into their match. So we wanted to use some video packages, which I think sometimes that's the simplest way to do it. Just a little nice little interview, character motivation, um, and, you know, why, why do these people want to, to wrestle for what they're wrestling for? And that's pretty much what we have here with these two looking at it there. So 71, good stuff here uh, for Paige's video package. And then... A 100, of course, in the middle of the show. We're not even at the end of the show. we got a 100 in the middle of the show here. 
Here comes Jimmy Uso trotting in, and there is the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And, you know, we kind of explained Jimmy's frustration earlier. Now, why is Jimmy frustrated? We remember last week, uh, I I don't think I even said that in the opening segment, but one of the reasons for that frustration, as we know, is because of what happened last week, where you had Jimmy, you know, kind of get frustrated at Roman after Roman kind of pushed him into um, a Claymore from Drew McIntyre. That allowed McIntyre and Priest to get the win in the main event over Reigns and Jimmy. Um, And we kind of had Jimmy go off, but then, you know, Roman walked up to Jimmy, whispered something in his ear, and they both walked away together. Um, You know, that's kind of your setup here. Why you have the frustration still, it's on Jimmy's face and whoever he was talking to, kind of making it clear, you know, that frustration is there, but he feels like he has no other option. He doesn't know what to do, Um, you know, and that's kind of where we sit. So, Jimmy walks in, and it's Reigns, and all of a sudden, it's just like, last week never happened. Reigns just kind of looks at Jimmy, just says, there's the man I've been waiting to see. Reigns gets up, and he hugs Jimmy again. So, we've got to see that a couple times over the past several weeks. So, he gives Jimmy this hug, and you can tell, once again, Jimmy just is kind of, he doesn't know what to do here. Uh, And that is when Roman just says, hey, I know everyone's talking about what happened last week, but... Look, we all get a little frustrated sometimes, and you know we all do things that we regret. And I know that you didn't mean to shove me last week, and you know that I didn't mean to shove you into the path of Drew McIntyre. And Roman's just really playing this up, that they both made mistakes here. And that is when Reigns just says, So let's put that behind us because you and I have bigger things to focus on here. And that's when Rain says, just like Sunday at No Way Out, we've got a match to focus on. You and me in the ring for the Universal Championship. My reward to you, your opportunity at this title right there on that table. And that is when Rain just said, so I'm glad you came here, but I want you to leave. And then Reigns just says, I want you to go get ready for the match on Sunday. Biggest match of your career. This is what, you know, this is what you've earned. You've earned this opportunity at the Universal Championship. And so I want you to go get ready and I'll see you on Sunday. So Jimmy just this whole thing I know is very bizarre. What what is Roman doing here? Um and so Roman just kind of sends Jimmy out the door. And that is how we we end off here uh, with Jimmy Uso leaving a 100 segment and Roman wanting Jimmy to get ready for the main event between the two of them on Sunday at No Way Out. All right, on to the next one here. We get an announcement as uh, Charlotte Flair and Dakota Kai both announced for the women's Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania. We know that they will join someone else who's been announced, and that was on Raw. Bailey is also in this match. So Bailey, Charlotte Flair, Dakota Kai, all in the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania. Uh, and we also have a match between these two, as we teased last week. So it's Charlotte Flair versus Dakota Kai, 65 here for this rating. Who is going to come out on top in the singles match between the two? Well, it is going to be Charlotte Flair, as this gets a 68 for this one. Could be a little surprising here that Charlotte won this one. Uh, but how does she do it? Blatantly cheating. I don't like the figure four here. We're not going to use that. She's not going to make Dakota Kai tap out. Um, that's not happening just yet. But we're going to we're going to pretty much push the blatant cheating is what we did. So Charlotte attained a finish here. That's what we use. So Charlotte with some cheating tactics and she gets the win over Dakota Kai. We're going to say by pinfall, not by submission. Uh, Charlotte continuing to be penalized for being in poor form. As you know, she has been in that since we started the save um, because she has the in the funk attribute still going on (laughs) since we started the save in June. We are hoping this thing goes away at some point because we really want to be able to use Charlotte more, but it just we can't do it as much. Um, but she's going to be in some big-time matches. We can't keep her off of these shows, but <laughs> it's just I wish we'd get rid of the end the funk attribute. But a 68 match here, so it actually did good in terms of looking at the in-ring performances and what the overall match got. Um, so gets a 68. Charlotte cheats, and then after the match, you know what? Charlotte just, that's not enough for her. She's announced her money in the bank. She wants to go ahead and start to take out one of her opponents, right? We're, you know, basically a month away from WrestleMania. She wants to take out one of her opponents, and we know Dakota Kai's in there now. So Charlotte starts to go after Dakota Kai after the match. But then, an interesting twist, as she goes after Dakota Kai, 
we hear the entrance music for Alexa Bliss and Raquel Gonzalez. So, these two start to make their way out because they've got a match coming up next. So, a 71 here for the segment. And so, Charlotte's going after Dakota Kai. Bliss and Gonzalez make their way out. Alexa Bliss is smiling, and she's almost laughing here because, of course, we know the history between these two um, after the breakup of the Mean Girls. And so, Charlotte's going after Dakota Kai, but Alexa's smiling. Someone who's not smiling is Raquel Gonzalez. And Raquel makes her way down, and so Alexis, or Alexa is smiling, and these two are making their way down. Raquel, you can tell, is just fuming. And she walks into the ring. Alexa's like, wait a minute, where are you going? And then Raquel Gonzalez walks into the ring, and she walks over to Charlotte, who realizes she's there, and she just kind of stares at Charlotte. And that's when Charlotte just sort of puts her hands up and backs off a little bit and rolls out of the ring. Um, so... We continue to play up this very interesting dynamic where Alexa and Raquel are aligned, but we still have the unknowns with with Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. So Raquel almost helping Dakota Kai here, much to the displeasure of Alexa Bliss. And so a lot of interesting stuff here going on uh, with this one. But Raquel, in a non-direct way, sort of saves Dakota Kai here from the beating from Charlotte Flair. So 71 overall for this segment and that is going to send us backstage where pat mcafee is there and he asked bianca belair and page hey i know you're teaming up tonight against alexa bliss and Raquel gonzalez but i think everyone right now is looking at the possibility of you two perhaps squaring off at wrestlemania for the smackdown women's championship um and you know by bianca just says look we both understand. If you just saw the video, you know, Paige, her whole goal was to come back and win the SmackDown Women's title. I get that. That was my goal at one point. I, I, you know, I achieved my goal by winning the SmackDown Women's Championship. Now Paige wants it. And as always, I'm up for a fight with anybody. And, you know, these two just kind of continue to push that here. And Paige just says, hey, I said it as plain as I could say it. Like, it's my goal is to take that championship. And if it's from Bianca, then it's what I have to do. And both just kind of a mutual respect here, understanding that, hey, they both have the same goal. And um, it's just that, you know, Bianca has what Paige wants right now. And so that's kind of playing up that possibility here with that. So 71, and that is going to lead us into our tag team match. Bianca Belair and Paige against Alexa Bliss and Raquel Gonzalez. And the match gets a 67. So not as well as I would have liked here, but Alexa and Raquel off their game here. Um, we're going to blame Charlotte for that. We're just going to say the end of funk kind of rubbed off on these two, uh, but no. So this ends in a draw. Um, as you guys know, I don't love to go this route, but sometimes it's necessary. Um, as we get a draw here and it gets to a double count out. So what happens is the action breaks down. We get Bianca and Raquel going at each other because they are going to, you know, face off for the SmackDown women's championship at no way out. So these two going at each other and then, you know, that kind of leads to the count out. So now you've got Paige and Alexa in the ring, Bianca and Raquel fighting outside, kind of almost to the crowd at this point. Um, So they're kind of out of the picture here. 67 for this one. So what happens? These two are fighting kind of away from the ring. Here comes Asuka. In a 70 segment here, Asuka comes in and, you know, Alexa's just kind of caught in the crossfire here as uh, Asuka looks at Paige and then just kind of looks directly at Alexa Bliss, and then goes and puts the Oscar lock on Alexa Bliss as kind of Paige is just standing over it. I mean, she's not going to help Alexa Bliss. Um, and so crowd's going wild. Then Oscar releases the Oscar lock and then walks over to Paige, and we kind of have the stare down, and what happens? You know what happens. We've seen this from Oscar weeks after week after week, seemingly. She then puts the Oscar lock on Paige, and so Oscar doesn't care who it is, uh, but she knows who her opponent is at No Way Out. It is Paige. Asuka continuing to kind of show very little remorse for whoever it is. She's taking out anything and every <laughs> everything in her path. Um, so Asuka getting the advantage here leading into that match at No Way Out. Is she, again, Alexa, Paige, doesn't matter. Um, so Asuka standing tall here uh, after this. So 70 overall for this segment. All right, and then we get a video package previewing the four-way tag team match for the Undisputed Men's titles at No Way Out. It is going to be the Lucha Brothers defending the tag team championships against Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest, Bray Wyatt, and Aleister Black, and the Viking Raiders. That is a four-way match, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. It's an elimination tag team match, 
at No Way Out. So we get kind of, you know, as we said, sort of looking at it, this is your you know, basically hype package for, for what these teams have done to get to this point um, and kind of your setup here leading into it. So 76, great segment here for this one. And um, that is going to send us um, backstage as we have, excuse me, yeah, we get to go to another video package here. Um, so in another video package, uh, it is Brock Lesnar. <laughs> we kind of see the video here. Of course, remember last week, Kofi challenged Brock Lesnar and uh, said, you know, he's got to he's got to do this. Even though Big E and, and Xavier Woods may not understand, Kofi's his own man, and Brock put his hands on him, tried to end his career. Kofi wants his payback. He challenged Brock Lesnar for No Way Out. And we just get a video here, and it's very simple. It is Brock Lesnar saying he's going to destroy Kofi Kingston at No Way Out. And he said if Big E and Xavier Woods want to get involved, he'll destroy them too. And it's pretty simple from Brock. <laughs> Brock smash. That's it. Like, Brock is going to smash Kofi Kingston. That's pretty much what it comes down to here. Um, he's going to destroy the guy. That's what he says. So 75 here for this one. Uh, that is going to, as we said, officially set it for No Way Out. So it is official. Brock Lesnar versus Kofi Kingston will take place on Sunday's pay-per-view. So or PLE, Premium Live Event. I, I prefer we stay in the pay-per-view realm. I like that better. All right, now we're going backstage. I forgot we, had, we almost skipped over the segment. So backstage, we have Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest, um, you know, who were kind of just walking down the, the, the hall here, and we see Mick Foley. And Mick Foley congratulates Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest on their big win last week. As we said, they defeated Roman Reigns, defeated Jimmy Uso, uh, Drew almost got the pin on Roman. We've really been pushing that, uh, you know, after Drew came up short at the Royal Rumble. Um, but uh, you kind of have Foldy here just saying, look, guys, I mean, you know, hey, I I'm the commissioner here, but I'd be lying if I said you don't got, you guys maybe don't feel like the favorite heading into, um, you know, that four-way tag team match at No Way Out on Sunday. Um, and he just said, you know, I'm, I'm basically, I'm proud of you both. Um, you know, you're kind of the, the, the perfect fit together as a tag team. And he kind of goes back through. He's like, you know, hey, I, I was in the rock and sock connection. Um, I understood, you know, we, we kind of needed each other, um, you know, to be able to achieve what we wanted to achieve at the time. We eventually also became the tag team champions. And so Foley just kind of a bit of a, a speech here from Mick um, pushing. I don't know if Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest are the rock and sock connection, but uh, he is kind of pushing, you know, sort of the, the timing and the need that those two had for each other uh, at the time and sort of being able to come together and become tag team champions. So kind of just pushing that uh, and what it would mean if these two could do that. Um, you know, just two two giant stars here at this point. Um, you know, like we said, we've certainly, uh, you know, got him to this point. And so uh, an 80 overall for this segment. So a bit of a pep talk here from Mick. And yeah, so Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest riding high. Uh, and Foley just says, you know, he'll be watching closely uh, on Sunday at No Way Out in this tag team championship match. So uh, there you go. That is your setup leading into the championship match. And now we head into uh, before our main event, which our main event is going to be John Cena. We said in action, he's going to be in action against Baron Corbin. Um, and backstage we go as The Miz is there. Pat McAfee talking to Sammy and The Miz. The Miz still wearing his button, Sammy's best friend, which he brought back last week. Um, and though Miz still, you know, he's still hobbling a little bit, you know, after that injury uh, we, we heard about. And so Miz still hobbling a little bit. Sammy's there checking on him. These two are happy as they can be. And Pat just asked Miz about his injury, and Miz just says, Pat, as I said, um, I'm not 100%, but I'm going to be there for my friend, my best friend on Sunday. I'm going to be there for him in this match um, because our primary goal is very simple. We're going to finish off John Cena. I don't like John Cena. Sammy doesn't like John Cena. We're going to finish him off on Sunday, and we're going to keep this United States Championship right where it belongs, and that's with us. So, you know, Sammy's as happy as could be. He's got his best friend back. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of your setup here leading into it. And that will lead us to our main event, but who's going to be present for the main event. It's going to be these two as they head out to ringside, uh, for this match between John Cena and Baron Corbin. All right. 72 for this one. Let's go to our main events. And if you thought Baron Corbin was going to get the surprising win, well, I'm sorry. He does not as in a 79 match here. So not bad, uh, for this one, uh, John Cena gets the win over Baron Corbin, 15 08. I did go 15 minutes with this one. Um, attitude adjustment wins it here for big match, John and 79, as we said for this one. Um, so John gets the win and afterwards 
he sees Sammy and the Miz just sort of, um, you know, walking back up on the on the stage here, looking down at Cena, and that is when Cena goes over and grabs a mic. This gets an 84 uh, for this one. I thought this would do a little bit better actually, but that's okay. So Cena looking up at Sammy and the Miz, and he just kind of stares up at him uh, and says, "You know, guys." I know. Um, I want to finish this with Sammy, but, you know, I want to finish this with Miz, too. I've had history with both of you guys, um, you know, and so that's kind of where things stand. But he said, I've also had history with the United States Championship. And he said, I know everyone's kind of looking around at this and and thinking this is just a, you know, a match about a rivalry between me and Sammy or me and Miz. It's not. He said, "I, I want a championship. I want my U.S. championship that I sort of made in WWE. I made it what it is today. Um, and so John just kind of pushing that he really wants this United States championship back, um, you know, given the history there and everything that, that he's you know had as a former champion um, has kind of helped him get to this point, but he's also pushed the belt to a higher level in WWE. So uh, Cena making it clear um, that he will do whatever he has to do to become the U.S. champion again, uh, because basically he doesn't like walking around without the gold, uh, and that's kind of where he is here. So um, Cena making it clear to these two, and then you have Sammy and the Miz just kind of talking to each other um, there, as uh, you know they're just kind of uh, talking back and forth with each other, feeling pretty confident heading into the triple threat match for the United States Championship uh, at No Way Out. So Cena making his declaration wants to be the U.S. champion. 84 for this one. And then, of course, it's going to be a 100 segment. It's Roman Reigns. How could it not be? So we go after the, the you know the promo here from Cena. We see Roman Reigns sitting at the table, and Roman is on the phone. And you can just see Roman nodding his head a few times, and he's still nodding a little bit, still nodding. And Roman just says, I see. He says, I'll be in touch. And so Roman hangs up the phone, and then he looks down, and there's a piece of paper on his desk. We have no idea what that piece of paper is, but Roman looks down at the piece of paper, and he just sort of looks at it, and he's just staring at it and staring and staring, and then Roman just shakes his head a little bit, and that is how we wrap up SmackDown. So who's Roman on the phone with? What's this piece of paper he's looking at? And why is he shaking his head at this piece of paper? Perhaps we will find out. So a lot of questions with Jimmy Uso, Roman Reigns coming out of this. And that will certainly open up a lot of questions leading into the main event of No Way Out. Roman Reigns versus Jimmy Uso for the Universal Championship. 100 to finish off. The go-home edition of SmackDown gets an 87. So a tremendous show here leading into our pay-per-view uh, a lot of good stuff, I thought, across the board. Uh, multiple 100 segments. We'll take that. A lot of green here, uh, which we like as well. Um, so that's kind of your setup. A lot of people on this show want a championship. Um, and as you guys know, that's kind of what I, I I like. I like people to have goals and um, you know, kind of develop the characters a little bit um, and sort of the aim for everyone. Um, and so, yeah, it's just uh, I, I really – I've enjoyed this for SmackDown, this build to no way out, and I think I'm really going to enjoy where we're headed – for WrestleMania. Uh, but yeah, I just, you know, sometimes I love both brands, but um, I feel, really feel like SmackDown, we've got a lot of very, very uh, exciting stuff in the works here uh, as we we head towards No Way Out and WrestleMania. So 87 for this show, and let's see what we get to before we wrap up. All right, that was SmackDown. Um, awesome show, fantastic reviews. Uh, let's see if there's anything here. Oh, Jay Briscoe invents a new move. Oh, man, Jay. Um, so, yeah, there, there you go with that. Uh, by the way, there is an AW contract offer here that I've already looked at and is someone that I am very interested in. Um, so I'm not going to click on it because I don't want you guys to see it should I decide to bring this person in. But I am very intrigued by this person here. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. But that this is one that I, I'm very interested in. I will say that. I don't know if he'll ultimately make his way to WWE, but I'm very interested in this right here, um, I will I will say that uh, for certain. So, uh, by the way, I did look at the mail. I think we just have the SmackDown series figures, 5.83. Um, pretty good rating, if you ask me. So, um, there is your rating for SmackDown. And as we said, that was um, SmackDown for this edition, uh, for the go-home edition. 
leading into no way out. Um, so as always, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good, all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys. Great feedback as always. Um, and check out everything else on the channel. The Exploring the Seaverse save. We're about 20 episodes into that now. So if you want to jump into the, the Cornell verse, definitely recommend going through that. It's not just what I say about it. It's all the great comments, um, you know, with people who played as all these promotions. It can be really fun and engaging to really get you into a Seaverse save. So it's really cool to check that out. Uh, really fun series we've been going through. But on the next episode of our WWE 2022 save, it will be our official preview for No Way Out.